What's up, folks? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the modeling and optimization procedure of a patch antenna. Let's start now. First, I'm going to open CSD as shown here. Select antenna, and next to the planar antenna, we use time domain solver, and we use metric unit such as gigahertz, millimeter. We set the simulation from 28, 26 to 30 gigahertz and check the E field, H field, and the far field monitors. Let's start to build the substrate of the patch antenna, named it as a substrate. The width of the substrate is a sub W. It will be symmetric to the coordinate or region. The length is called a sub L. The thickness is a sub T. The components is named as the substrate. It will include the substrate, ground, and the patch. The substrate material we used here is the Rogers 4350 with an epsilon of 3.66 and a very low loss. Let's set the sub W to be 4, sub L to 4, and the sub T to 0.254. Here you can see the substrate is done. Next, we are going to build the ground. If the width and the length are the same as this of the substrate, the material thickness is named as TH, standing for thickness. The material is PEC. Let's set TH to 0.017. Now let's change the color of the materials. Select the material properties. I set PEC to orange. For the substrate material, I do the same thing. Change it to green. You can see the color of the materials have been changed. And now let's add patch antenna. We name the box as patch. The width is named as patch W. The length is patch L. The metal thickness is the same as the ground, which is TH. Set patch W to 2.7 and patch L to 2.7. We can see the patch antenna has done. The parameters of this model are showing here. If you want to change the parameters, you can change them here. Now we need to build the feeding structure. Here we use coaxial cable to feed the antenna. Select the cylinder. Name it as inner. This is the inner conductor of the coaxial cable. Name the radius as inner R. Since the feeding point will influence the impedance, we also parameterize it. It is called a feed offset. The length is called a coax, coaxial, just as coax, coax L. We group it to a new component called a coaxial. The radius of the inner conductor is a 0.15. I will explain why it is 0.15 mm later. The feeding offset is 1.2. After we build the model, we need to optimize it. To achieve good impedance matching, the coaxial length is 2. Looks like I put the pin in wrong direction. I should change it. I copy it to Y center and set X center to 0. Now looks better. 
Next, I built the insulator between the inner and outer conductors of the coax. I call it outer. The out radius is out R. The inside radius is inner R. The length is coax L. I load the material from the library. Teflon is also, which is also called as PTFE, is commonly used in coax as insulator. The outer R is 0.5 mm. Now the insulator has interference with substrate. I need to insert it. Looks like I need to change the inner conductor direction. The minimum should be minus coax L. Here is the part of the coax. Now we built the shield. Name the cylinder as shield. The outer radius is out R plus 0.2. Inside radius is outer R. The length of a shield should be shorter since it is connected to ground plane instead of a patch. Looks like I made a mistake. Yep, here is a typo. There you go. Now the modeling has done. We have a patch antenna fit by coaxial cable. I need to subtract the PCB substrate by the inner conductor and the insulator of the coax. Select the substrate. Select insert. Select inner and outer. Down. Now the substrate is cut. It's time to set a wave port on the coax. Just use the, the default settings. The modeling is 100% done now. Save the project as 28 GHz single patch dash one demo. Let's run the simulation. It will take a while. Let me increase the speed of the video. Down. 
Let's check the result. Here is S11. We find two issues. There is impedance mismatch. We need to change the fit point to where it's closer to 50 ohms. There is a frequency shift. It resonates at 26 gigahertz. We need to decrease the patch size, change the fit offset to 0.8, and rerun the simulation. Here is the result. It looks better. We have better impedance matching. The best return loss is 18 dB. And its resonant frequency is closer to 28 GHz. But it is still lower than 28 GHz. We need to decrease the patch size further. Run the simulation again. Here is the result. The return loss is better and the, the resonant frequency is higher. Keep reduce the patch size. Rerun the simulation. Let's check the result. The return loss is better, but we need to keep to optimize it. Rerun it. Its resonant frequency is higher than 28 gigahertz. We need to keep optimizing it. I will leave it to you. Now let me show you how to calculate the coaxial cable characteristic impedance. Before this, we need to know the epsilon of an insulator used for coax. You can see the epsilon of PDFE is 2.1. The pin diameter of a mini SMP is 0.3 mm. This is why I set inner conductor radius to be 0.15. In practice, we can use mini SMP to fit the patch. The calculated impedance is very close to 50 ohms. This is the instruction of modeling a patch antenna fit by coax and the optimization procedure. Thanks for your watching.